Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'd like to go over the repair of Tromf hand pendant surgical table controls. The common problem with these controls is the cable down here at the bottom becomes loose and the cord will spin around and that breaks some of the connections on the inside. It's a simple repair and these hand controls I believe are just over $2,000 if you want to buy a replacement. So instead, we're going to repair them. What you'll need is a T8, a T10 Torx bit, and I've got Vache MKP 1839-510-84HQ capacitors. This is what breaks on the inside. It'll shear off right here at the base of the capacitor. Here's one from a prior repair. You can see how it broke off flush. You also need a piece of three quarter inch shrink tube. And I'm using the dual layer shrink tube because it gives the capacitor a little extra cushion. This is installed over the capacitor body to give it a little bit of vibration dampening. To open the hand pendant, you're going to flip it over on its back and there's going to be two screws that retain the clip. Once you've removed the clip, there's four T8 screws that are recessed underneath the rubber over molding. You're going to shove the driver in, loosen them all up. Don't loosen one all the way up, just loosen them in sequence just a little bit and then make a round again and a round again. And this will gradually push the body apart as it separates. Now be careful, there are two wires that connect the cord to the main circuit board. We're just going to disconnect those right now. You can see the old capacitor with what is a six pin connector and we have a four pin connector. Where it breaks is right here at the base of the capacitor. The cord comes in and it will rotate around. Over time, it'll shear off right at the capacitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder in a new capacitor and then we're going to gap it a little more correctly. And once that's done, then we'll retension the cord retainer and make sure that it's positioned correctly so that it won't spin around anymore. On the other side of the capacitor, there's one wire that's going to be soldered that runs to the large connector, and that is it. That's the first step. Second step, take your T10, you're going to loosen up the screws that are holding the hold down strap on your capacitor. Set off to the side. And here you can see the capacitor just popped right off. Now the symptom is going to be an intermittent failure on this hand pendant. Sometimes when you plug it into the table, it'll work. And then say you'll plug it into another table and it won't work. But that's because every time you unplug it and you plug it, you're repositioning the cord and it's twisting, turning just a little bit to make contact with this little nub that's remaining on the back of the capacitor. So as soon as you get a failure on one of these hand pendants, open it up and take a look. I guarantee it's gonna be one of these little guys that's broke. The first step is gonna to be to remove the capacitor either by desoldering whatever's left or clipping it out and starting anew. You can see that there's a shrink tube that's on the outer edges of the uh, capacitor. Um, if you want to see the part number, just cut it off and you can see a little bit of the print right there, but none of that's important. I'm just going to go ahead and clip it. Clip it. And strip it back. You don't have to strip it that much. Okay, you can see a flexible remnant down here in the body. This flexible line is going to attach to the other end of the capacitor and it's usually going to be bent pretty abruptly so um, you're going to have to remove the old solder off it. 
I'll just do that with the solder gun real quick. And I'm going to apply solder to the one wire that comes out the other side of the capacitor. Just tin it up. For one side of the capacitor that faces the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my pliers on the base and give it a little bit of a space and I'm going to bend the wire over. While I'm holding on to it, I'm going to give it a little bit of a curl to add a little bit of vibration dampening in case this ever happens again where it comes loose. And I create just a little bit, a little bit of a curl there, and then I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to use the holes where the, the clip used to go through, and I'm going to use that to hold my capacitor while I tin it. There we go. Now that side that has the curly Q, that's going to connect to this wire that's really soft and bendable. It's down here. Uh, but first, I'm going to give it a little bit of heat shrink tube. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to use some 3 16 heat shrink. just enough and I'm going to put that over the flexible wire over it just like that take the capacitor I'm going to hold it with one hand while I solder it with the other Let's see if I can get that better in frame so I'm going to make sure that the curly Q exit of the capacitor is directly in line with the wire and now I'm going to solder them together. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to move the heat shrink tube up and over the area that I just soldered. Not like it really matters, but I do it for a little bit of fit and finish. And I've got my heat gun set at 200 degrees. Shrink it down real quick. Now, we're ready to seat that capacitor down in there. Take a look at how it's gonna bend that wire. Looks pretty good. Just like that, All right? I'm going to take the three quarter inch piece of heat shrink tube. I'm going to fit that over the body of the capacitor. I'm going to put it as far down to the bottom as I can. And then I'm going to use my air gun to shrink it down. Now this could go faster if I were to turn up the temperature, but I'm trying to keep the temperatures as low as possible for these components because I don't want to damage them by heating them up too much. Just enough to shrink the shrink tube down, just like that. Keep it in place. All right, now I'm going to twist the capacitor, seat it down in where it's going to sit normally. Put the retention strap back on, along with the two hold down screws. Let's go to the T10. And tighten down all the way. Not too much to crack the plastic. So I hope you guys can see how that wire just kind of flexes and sits down in there. So this is designed to move around a little bit, but when this clamp comes loose because of yanking or because of age, um, it allows that cable to spin completely around and it normally will break at the capacitor because they didn't add enough of a loop to give it a little bit of stress reduction. So that's why I created that curly Q and uh, it allows it all to move quite a bit more. Um, right before we clamshell this guy back up, we're going to retension 
this uh, cord retainer right here and make sure that it's as tight as possible in both that direction and that direction. So the next, we're gonna turn our attention to the other side of the capacitor. Same thing I did before. We're going to take a needle nose, stick them at the base of the capacitor, and then bend the wire over, over to the right, just a little bit. Now the reason that we use the needle nose at the base of the capacitor is because you don't want that weak point, which is the exit of the capacitor, to be where it bends. You want it to bend out a little bit. Um, that way there, it doesn't stress it and eventually break like it did with these guys. So now I'm going to clip it off at about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to tin it with just a little bit of solder right at the tip. Okay, we're going to retin it right at the tip. There we go. Here's my new wire. I'm going to make sure that it's tinned properly down at the end. There we go. And it needs a little piece of shrink tube to cover the joint because this guy's floating around underneath the circuit board. It's not being retained to the back casting. So uh, we're gonna have to use shrink tube on this guy. Okay. Next, I'm going to solder these two together in line. Excellent. Put the shrink tube all the way down as far as you can go. Then we're going to push it down just slightly while we heat it up. There we go. Creates a nice little bend. There it is. Okay, now that the capacitor is done, we're going to retension the cable here and make sure that it's set up properly so that this doesn't happen again. I'm going to take the T10 bit, loosen up that clamp, we're going to shove the cord in as far as it'll go, and we want to make sure that both those screws are facing perfectly down, and then tighten it all the way back down as tight as you can go. Okay, so you can see that there's no gap here where the cord exits the hand control and it doesn't want to spin like it was earlier. And we're ready to clamshell it back together. So first I'm going to start with the single wire large connector. I'm flip it back over the opposite direction. Put the four pin wire in. And here is where we start with the four T8s on the back. And you'll have to tighten each one down just a little bit in sequence until it's all the way down. Once you've gotten all four of the back cover screws tightened back down and your clamshell fits nice and neat all the way around, then we're gonna take the clip, fit it back on there, along with its two screws. Check the fit and finish, make sure that everything looks good. And we are now ready to go and test it out on a table. The most important step, always test your hand controls after you fix them. So we're gonna test every single function on here. Um, but the original symptom was that you have all or nothing. I believe that the wire that goes in is a power wire, which powers the display and the computer that's inside it. So when that breaks at the capacitor, you lose power and you got nothing. But anyway, we're gonna test every single button and check its function. Thanks for watching guys, hope you like it.